take this with the grain of salt. Grain of salt. Um, social media, I believe, is like a huge arm or wing of giving us an understanding of how close the time of Ad-Dajjal is. Because we know that the system of Ad-Dajjal is going to be a system of deception. That's it. That's how he's going to rule is through deception his whole his whole system is based on being deceived or being deceitful and and deceiving people and tricking people and making them think that what's up is down and down is up and left and right social media is that to a t that is the description of social media is a pure deception nothing is ever what it seems to be i guarantee you that there is probably a 0.00 and then some number after that percentage of social media accounts that have any genuineness to them even mine none of ours are genuine because we're only posting the good things we're only posting we're picking and choosing parts of our lives to show you to paint a picture uh and, and that's never reality nobody's social media is reality so when i what i've seen it lately i was sitting back thinking that we are not far away from Dajjal because people are envious of each other on social media. They, they're they hating on each other on social media. They have, you know, envious and jealousy and none of it's real. You are envious over a person based on their social media account. That's not real. You're envious over a falsehood. Before the Dajjal can come out, there has to be a preparation, an introduction. The stage has to be set for him. A world full of fakeness, a world full of deception, a world full of, if you like, FRGs, fake religious guys and girls, a world full of fake media, fake social media, things appear different to what they really are in reality, people think in a fantasy world and make things that are Fantasia world, look as if they are real. Liars look like they're selling the truth and the truthful people look like they are, they're actually lying. That's what they think. What's been shown to us a long time ago used to be bad or abnormal or wrong. Now it's become normal, right. And anybody who opposes it, they're the ones who look crazy. Do you know what I'm talking about? We live in a world of fakeness right now. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mercy, you know, may Allah have mercy on whoever is saved from it. You know, a little while ago, for example, things that in my days, they used to be outrageous. Today, they're very normal. One thing, for example. Students ask me a question. Can I have a girlfriend? Can I have a boyfriend? Is, does Islam allow it? And I'm thinking to myself, isn't this meant to be so obvious that you can't really, you know, there's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend outside of marriage. But they ask about it sincerely, really thinking there's nothing wrong with it. What's the problem with having a boyfriend and girlfriend? What's wrong with that? You know, nothing wrong. Everybody does it. What used to be wrong, and I'm even talking about the non-Muslims. In the 1950s, it was very normal to say that I won't you know, be with a guy or a girl until we're actually married. Non-Muslims used to say that. And then slowly as time went on, it became normal. The father of the space age. That's what they called. You know what he said? I'm not the father of the space age. That's the real father of the space age. Okay, now this guy, who was at Cal Poly Tech, right? This guy, Jack Parsons, was openly a devil worshiper. He developed the fuel that enabled us to penetrate the stratosphere. Satellites could not have come about without this guy. In his diary that he himself wrote, he had a dream. This is 1948. He had a dream where he saw somebody that he calls Belial Dajjal. And he tells him, you are helping me. Okay, I'm not making this up. You think I'm making this up? Wallahi, I'm not making this up. You go look it up yourself. Okay, so where's all this stuff coming from? Where's all, seriously, where's it all coming from? 
We're in the age of the Dajjal, you know. It's just Allahu Anam, when and where and what, but this is it, people. As far as I'm concerned, it's end game. Narrated by this companion called Tamim al Dari. Cutting the story short, uh, we were in a, a ship and a huge storm hit us until our ship reached an island. A beast came to us on this island. There is a man who is waiting for your news anxiously. We entered this hut that was set for worship and suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man. His arms were wrapped to his neck. They said, we got afraid of this man and we, did, we didn't feel safe around him. The man said to us, tell me about the palm trees of Baisan. Are there more palm trees and have they be filled with dates or not yet? They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. Today, really, in Jordan, dates are scarce now. It used to be in history, abundance. He said, now explain to me about Buhayr al tabariya He said, does it have water in it? He said, they said, yes, there is lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. The biblical lake is shrinking after several years of Some drought. top trending news. The water level in the Sea of Galilee has gone down by 40 inches. Only two centimeters away from irreversible damage. Then he asked them, he said, tell me about Zagar fountain. They said, what do you want to know about this fountain? Is there a large fountain happening and a great river from it? And do people plant a lot of vegetation around it and it gives a lot of water yet? They said, yes. It's all got a lot of water and its people plant a lot. Okay, tell me about a prophet who is Ummi, who is illiterate, cannot read or write. What has he done? He has come out in Mecca and now he lives in Yathrib, in Medina. Have his people fought him? They said yes. He was driven out by his own people. Really? Has that really happened? They said yes. He said, behold, it is better for those people who obey him to keep on obeying him. Now I'm going to tell you about myself. I am Christ. Isa now very soon, based on the signs you've showed me, I'm going to be given permission to leave and I'm going to come out. There isn't, there wouldn't be a village or a city or a place on earth except that I would have reached it all in 40 days, except two places, Mecca and Tiba, Medina. They are both forbidden for me to enter. And no, the day of judgment is very close. I'm looking at it. I mean, I feel it every day of my life, you know. The day of and people are going to get their due. And we'll see on the day of judgment who's who. You're going to see who's who. You're going to either all, be, all get some lights or I'll be uh, thrust. That's God's decision. I'm, I thank God people aren't my judge. <laughs> I mean, I'm really glad because God is my judge. Sayyidina Ali said, ask me before you lose me, because between these two shoulders is great knowledge from what the messenger of Allah has given me. A man stood up and said, O leader of the Muslims, when will the Jal come out? Imam Ali said, it has things unmentionable to this matter, and things follow one after another, like the sandal follows the sandal. He will come out when people kill of the prayer, when people are no longer trustworthy in their actions and they think their lying is permissible, when people begin to eat usury and there's bribery everywhere, when buildings begin to get built high and people follow their desires, when people sell their faith and religion for this world, when shedding blood is a light matter. The person who forgives and is gentle with people is considered weak. And oppression is something people are proud of. The rulers are the worst of people. People trust the ministers and the ministers betray them. The literate people become wretched. Oppression manifests everywhere and divorce becomes common and sudden death. Also ornamented masjids. Mosques are made beautiful and mimbars made high. When hearts become bereft, people break contracts without caring. Musical instruments are used all over. Many types of wine will become available. Fornication becomes open. Good people are considered treacherous. 
The woman will help her husband earn an income out of love of this world. People greet each other only because they know them. People will wear sheep clothing over the hearts of wolves. Their hearts are more bitter than patience, and they are more foul than a carcass. So safety, 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 walwaha, alwaha, al-ajla, al-ajla, hurry up. These are signs, hurry up, before this, all this tribulation comes, get moving, well, jidda, jidda, and be serious about your life. Be serious about your life. Ni'mal maskan yawma idhen bayt al-maqdis. What a good place to reside during those days is bayt al-maqdis, ard al-ribaq. Bayt al-Maqdis, because this is where the Dajjal is defeated, in Bayt al-Maqdis. And so those people who are there in Bayt al-Maqdis, when the Dajjal manifests, these are the people that, subhanAllah, they get the reward of being with the Mahdi and the Isa. And there's a tradition also that says, Al-Ghimari, who is a great muhaddad of this age, said, لا يخرج المهدي حتى يقال لا مهدي. The Mahdi does not come until people start saying there's no Mahdi. Which is happening now. In Sahih Muslim. Hurry to do good deeds before a trial comes like a piece of the dark night. A man reaches the morning as a believer and by the evening he is disbelieved. And a man reaches the evening as a believer and by the morning he has disbelieved. Subhanallah. He sells his religion for a small benefit of the dunya. This is what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us about the time that is going to come. About the time that is surely going to come. That people are going to sell their religion for such a small price. The Prophet ﷺ commanded a man to call out, come to the prayer. The Salah is coming, come all to the prayer. And all of the companions came. And the Prophet ﷺ said, There was no Prophet before me except that it was an obligation for him to lead his Ummah to the best of what he knew for them and to warn them against the worst of what he knew was going to happen to them. And this Ummah will be afflicted by trials and things you would deny them. Meaning, if I told you about them, you wouldn't believe me. You would barely believe what I was going to say. The trials are going to be so severe. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, O my people, there has been no fitna on the face of this earth, no trial on the face of this earth since Allah Azza wa Jal created the children of Adam, the offspring of Adam. And there will be no trial on this earth until the day of judgment that is greater than the trial of the Masih al-Dajjal. Nobody will escape what is before it except that he will escape it. Meaning, if you can be successful now, if you can escape the fitan that come before the Dajjal, then bi-idhnillahi ta'ala you will be safe from the fitna of the Masih al-Dajjal. Allah has not sent any prophet except that he warned his people against the one-eyed Dajjal. And verily, I warn you of him. And I am the last of the prophets, and you are the last of the nations. And this is the beginning of enforcing and drilling into the mind of the companions, radiallahu anhum wa ardahum, that there is not going to be a prophet after the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Dajjal will begin by saying that he is a prophet. He will appear amongst you, obviously, clearly. 
You won't deny, you know, you won't, it's not like he will be hidden. And this is a refutation of those people who say that the Dajjal is the TV or the Dajjal is the system. La mahala, you won't be able to miss it when he comes. Verily, it is the truth, it is near, and everything that is going to happen is near. He will appear because of the anger which will make him angry. And the hour will not come until the inheritance will not be divided, nor will people rejoice over the wealth and the spoils of war. He says he will come because of an anger that will make him angry. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best what kind of anger this is. Is this the anger that, that splits up the, the brothers or is this, this the anger of war and fighting and killing that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam foretold? Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. But the hour will not come until the inheritance will not be divided and the booty will not be rejoiced over. So people now today, today, right now, are not sharing out the inheritance according to the Sharia. True or not? The Prophet ﷺ said, If he will come forth when I am among you, I will argue on behalf of every Muslim. And if he will appear after me, then everyone must be for himself, every man for himself. And Allah is the helper of every Muslim on my behalf. And in the hadith of Um Salama, if he appears after I die, Allah will make the righteous people sufficient for you against him. Surely he will come forth from the land of the eastern side, and it is said, Khurasan. He will come forth from the east. And it is said Khurasan. And Khurasan is the land which is now uh, mostly Iran. And it is the eastern side of Iran. He will come from the Jews of Asfahan. Now we know Asfahan is a city in Iran. And Asfahan was a city in the same place that was known by the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this city, Asbahan, there will be Jews within it who will protect the Masih al-Dajjal and he will come out from amongst them. Jews whose faces will resemble shields covered with skin from the way between Syria and Iraq. So either the Jews will be from uh, Asbahan originally. Israel today has many, many, many people living in it who are originally from the Jews of Asfahan. He will cause mischief. He will disorder things. He will cause mischief on his right and on his left. And the Messenger of Allah said, O oh Allah's servant, be steadfast. O oh Allah's servant, be steadfast. O oh Allah's servant, be steadfast. Be strong. I will describe to you a characteristic which no prophet has described before me. And in the hadith of Ubadah radiallahu an, I have told you so much about the Dajjal, I am afraid that you might not understand. He will begin by saying, I am a prophet when there is no prophet after me. And then, the second time he will say, I am your Lord, but you will not see your Lord until you die. Indeed, the Dajjal is blind by the left wiped eye. A thick piece of flesh will cover over the eye like a green hot burning light. His right eye will be like a floating grape. He will have thick hair and he will walk in the land and verily the land and the heavens belong to Allah. He will be a young man with twisted hair and a floating eye. I compare him to Abdul Uzza ibn Qatan who is short, hen-toed with curly hair and white as in his skin will be fair. From his trials is that he will have with him the heaven and hell, a mountain of bread and resemblance of the heaven and hellfire will come with him. So it's not real Jannah, nothing with the Dajjal is real. It's not the real Jannah that he brings, but what he brings is an image, a fake. And so the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, his hell is heaven and his heaven is hell. So if you are given a choice, to enter Jannah or the Hellfire, enter the Hellfire. 
Between his two eyes is written kafir. Everyone who will dislike him will read it. Every believer, whether he knows how to write or whether he does not know how to write, will see it. Written between the two eyes of this Dajjal. And it, it would be written in an alphabet that says kafir, unbeliever. And they would be able to read it, every mu'min, whether literate or illiterate, whether they can read or they can't read. Now, one of the phenomena of this age is what's known as the semiotics. In other words, in order to facilitate lit people who can't read, things are literally written in semiotic alphabet, not in by pictures. So, for instance, uh, you see Shell Station, they don't write Shell anymore, if people notice that. They don't write Shell. They just have a Shell, and everybody knows that's Shell. So you don't have to know how to read Shell to know that it's the Shell Station. This is one of the uh, phenomena of our age, is that people can literally read things through semiotics without having to have this knowledge. So there are three shifts right now. God is replaced with the universe. The soul is replaced with the body, a focus on the body. And then the afterlife is replaced with what? This life. And then the final one, the scariest one. When you had a religious doctrine, who decides what's right and wrong? The Pope does. Even if the Pope doesn't, okay, maybe the Bible does. Revelation will decide what is right and what is wrong. But now that we're free from the clutches of religion, we don't need anybody to tell us what is absolutely right and what is absolutely wrong. We should be able to figure that out for ourselves. We should figure that out for ourselves. So morality that used to be absolute, this is wrong. Now we don't need that anymore. Morality became relative. In other words, your right and wrong doesn't have to be the same as what? My right and wrong. That's your worldview. This is my worldview. And even as a society, there's some things that we consider wrong 20 years ago, but 10 years ago they became okay, and 10 years later they became awesome. You can celebrate them. Have you seen this in your own experience? Right? So morality is constantly shifting. You don't have a set definition for what is right and what is wrong. You don't need that anymore. By the way, where do you get set definitions for right and wrong? Through revelation. So this last shift from absolute morality to relative morality, you know what it's directly related to? The, the role of revelation replaced with the role of reason. You don't need revelation anymore. All you, you can use your logic and come up with your own morals. Revelation is, you know, unreasonable. Now notice these four shifts that I talked about. Notice how all of them go from something unseen to something seen. Did you notice that? Allah is in the unseen, the universe is in the seen. The soul is in the unseen, the body is in the seen. The afterlife is in the unseen, the this life is in the seen. Revelation comes from the unseen, its authenticity is in the unseen, its values are in the unseen, but the reasoning and logic and my own thinking is what? It's in the seen, it's now. In other words, there's a focus away from the ghaib. Now listen to this. Imam Nawawi rahimahullah, he collected all of the ahadith on Dajjal. Dajjal has lots of ahadith. And he basically summarized the lesson that comes from all of those ahadith. He says, Ibtala Allahu bihi ibadahu. Allah will test using him his slaves. Using who? Using Dajjal. Allah will test his slaves. Wa aqdarahu ala ashya'a min maqdurati Allahi ta'ala min ihya'i al-mayyit alladhi yaqtuluh. And Allah will empower him with things that are usually only in the dominion of Allah. For example, he will be able to give life to the dead that he himself kills. وَمِن ظُهُورِ زَهْرَةِ الدُّنْيَا And he will bring out the beauties of worldly life. وَالْخَصَبِ مَعَهُ And the greenery and produce out of it. وَجَنَّتِهِ وَنَارِهِ وَنَهَرَيْهِ And he will have his own version of Jannah, his own version of Nar, and his own two rivers. وَاتِّبَاعِ كُنُوزِ الْأَرْضِ لَهُ And he will follow the resources of this earth, and the, and the resources, resources of this earth will submit to him. They will come under his feet. وَأَمْرِهِ السَّمَاءَ أَنْ تُمْطِرَ فَتُمْطِرَ And his ability to command the sky 
to rain and it will rain. وَالْأَرْضِ أَن تُنْبِتَ فَتُنْبِتْ And he'll tell the earth to produce and it'll produce. فَيَقَعُ كُلُّ ذَلِكَ بِقُدْرَةِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ وَمَشِيئَتِهِ All of that will happen by the power of Allah and His will. By the way, is artificial rain a reality? Is, is artificial production a reality today? Is, you know, are our limbs being regenerated? Is there a worldly concept of Jannah and Jahannam already? Are resources of the world being put to, the, put to use? Resources you could not have imagined? Sand and silicone being put to technology's use? Treasures of the earth that could never have been considered treasures in history are now treasures? Right? All of this, by the way, all of this seems to suggest what? That Jal makes you focus on the... And this is happening in our time. So this is all preparation for the final coming of this Messiah of the Dajjal, the imposter Christ. So the system is literally being formulated. And if you don't think it, then you are like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi until people are in complete heedlessness about who the Dajjal is, about what he is. The Prophet clearly clarified that the Dajjal is literally the antagonist, the imposter of Christ. So that the Dajjal's teaching will be pure materialism. In other words, he will teach people that your salvation is through the dunya. He will tell people that if you acquire dunya, then you'll be saved. You'll, be, you'll feel good about yourself. Self-esteem, have success, do all these things in the dunya and finally you'll... And then when people feel guilty, which is human nature to feel remorse about bad things, they go to the Dajjalic priest. Like the psychiatrists and the social workers, they say, no, 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 it's all right. It's okay to be homosexual. This is a lifestyle choice. Because teenagers feel great sickness, these people that enter into these uh, diseased relationships, and they feel guilt. Many of them commit suicide. What does the Dajjalic system tell them? They say, no, this is socialization. This is this evil uh, Judeo-Christian culture that's telling you these things are bad. It's not bad. It's just a natural impulse. It's a natural choice. If the, the, the man drinking alcohol because of a weakness in his moral character, if he goes there and he tells you, no, no, alcohol is a disease. It's a disease. You have a disease. You can't help yourself. This is what they tell them. If they go to the psychiatrist, he tells them, no, no, you're okay. I'm okay. You're okay. Let's build your self-esteem. Feel good about yourself. It doesn't matter what you do, accept yourself. You have to learn to forgive yourself. This is the type of thing that they preach in this system. They want to eliminate the whole sense that a human being has human responsibilities before Allah and before the creation of Allah. And he has to own up to those responsibilities or he has to make tawbah if he falls short. And he has to feel remorse because nadama is a condition of tawbah. If you don't feel remorse, you haven't made tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this whole idea of getting out remorse and purging it from your system, is that is a, an imposter tradition. It has nothing to do with spiritual teaching. But this is what the Dajjal and the Dajjalic system want to tell people. The other thing the Prophet said, he would have mountains of wheat. He would have mountains of wheat and people are suffering except those who follow him. Now if you look at the demarcation of the world today, those people in this uh, disease system, they eat from the Dajjal. But those who don't follow the system, they're not. They're suffering. They have poverty, they have hunger, they have all these things. And so what does the shayateen? What do you shayateen? To kill the next, they will be sent with the Dajjal shayateen that speak to the people. And they say, Alaysa bihada rabbukum, isn't this your Lord? Isn't this your God? Isn't He providing for you? You see, they want to take people's dependence away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make them depend on the wheat that they provide. You see, the mountains of wheat, if you just do what we say, if you enter into the five-year plan with the IMF and the World Bank, we'll give you wheat, we'll help you get out of your suffering. They don't want people to be independent of them and dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to create a dependency which is the nature of Rab and Marbuk. This is the, the relationship between a, a, a slave and his lord is the relationship of a dependent on an independent. Allah is mustaqim an al khalq Allah is independent of His creation and we are dependent on Him. But what this system which is preparing itself for this final manifestation of evil in the Dajjal is to make people completely dependent on it and free from Allah.
This is what they want to do. So you have health insurance, you don't worry about things. You don't worry, you have health insurance. We'll take care of you. The ambulance will get here. Call 911. When the ruh reaches the hutum, what do you do? Call 911? This is what they want you to think, that they'll always be there to help you. And it's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie, it's a lie and it cheats people out of their divine right to be slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It wants to make them slaves of the system itself. And, and put people into a state of poverty and subjugation and humiliation. But the Prophet said, <laughs> That humiliation and subjugation would be written upon people who go against my command. My command. It is just worthy of this world that in the morning it supports a man, but in the evening, it does not recognize him. Subscribe to Al Hakika for more videos. Peace be upon you.